We're going to talk now about fractional indices and unfortunately I know that some of you even just looking at the word fraction or fractional get terrified and, and I just want to show you you don't have to be terrified of fractions at all yeah in general we say that x to the power a half so a fractional index yeah? so the index is a fraction x to the power a half that is the same as the square root of x okay I'm just gonna put some numbers there because the square root there should be a 2 there actually, yeah, but because the square root is the most common root, we never write it. We only write there a 3 or a 4 when it's the cube root or the fourth root, yeah. And x is actually x to the power 1, like everything is to the power 1. Uh, we don't write that in x either, yeah. But that is important to realize, and I'll show you in a minute uh, why. Yeah, but x to the power of half is the same as the square root of x. Now, is that something... Um, to really uh, feel worried about absolutely not. I'm going to ask you the following. I'm going to ask you uh, the question, what is the square root of 16? Uh, so which number multiplied by itself is 16? Uh, and hopefully you say, well, the answer to that is 4. Yeah, because 4 squared is 16. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so the square root of 16 is 4. Now, let me take this example to prove this rule. Yeah. So 16 can be written as 4 to the power 2, 4 squared, agree? That is the same thing, 16 is the same as 4 squared. And now, I'm saying that 16 to the power of half, therefore then is the same as 4 to the power 2, to the power of half, eh? 16, which is 4 squared, so 16 to the power of half is the same as 4 squared to the power of half. Yeah, we agree with that. Okay, then the third law of the indices says, well, if you have brackets, what do you do with those indices? You multiply them. So, 2 times a half is 1. So, actually, 16 to the power a half equals 4 to the power 1. 2 times a half. And that is 4. So, 16 to the power a half is 4. Yeah, the square root of 16 equals 4. All right. So this just proved that 16 to the power of half is the same as the square root of 16 is the same as 4. Yeah? Now, I'm just going to take a new sheet and I'm just going to keep this relatively short. So you kind of remember that to the power of half is the square root of x to the power of 1. Yeah, remember? Well, not really because I've just proven it to you eh? why it looks like that yeah but if you okay remember this one then have a look at this one y to the power 2 over 3 yeah which is also a fractional index now don't get scared all of a sudden let's just draw the root sign let's put the base inside now 2 over 3 where does the 3 go to where does the 2 go to well, to the power of half, if I write this one somewhere in the corner of my paper, to the power of half is the square root of x to the power 1. So the 2 goes into the root sign. So the denominator goes into the root sign. So in this particular case, I'm talking about the third root. Yeah, not the squared root, but the third root of y. Well, not to the power 1, the numerator, but to y to the power 2. Yeah. All right, so um, what shall I do? Uh, for instance, 5. Um, I've, I've no idea. I'm just going to say something. To the power of 4 over 5. Yeah, that would be, let me draw this root sign, 5. Yeah, where does the numerator go to? 4, that is of 5 to the power of 4. Where does the denominator go to? That is the fifth root of 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so that's the relationship, uh, relationship between a fractional index and you turn that into a root. Yeah, so x to the power of half is the square root of x to the power of one, and therefore, and if and if you if you know that one and all the other examples, you can derive from it. Okay, next video example questions.